What that is it today, Donnie Lee? And that means... Woohoo! Let's go fishing! <laughs> Thanks for checking out my video. This time, you've joined me down at the lagoon at the back of Wicksteed Park in Kettering, Northamptonshire, on a day session. Well, as you had seen in the intro, I've been invited down to fish on a day session no, down at the lagoon at the back of Wixley Park in Kettering, Northampton. I was invited down by co-chairman Ollie Smith. Invited down today, hopefully do a little bit of a video, hopefully catch some fish. The uh, weather is less than favourable and it's raining, but at least it's not freezing. Uh, no interest of yet, we got here first light but yeah not had nothing yet but there's still plenty of time it's only half past eight I think in the morning uh, at some point soon I'll uh, flip the camera around and get Ollie to answer a few questions of plans and stock levels things they got coming up they've done a lot of work down here over the last two or three years changing everything around it really pegs building more pegs sorting out the water problem because they had a problem with a collapsed pipe so they used to suffer in the summer with the water levels but yeah it's, it's a cracking little venue predominantly tench fishery really so uh, yeah soon I'll talk to Ollie and uh, he can answer some questions well, hello, you join me and Ollie to a bit of a Q&A and ask us for a few questions. So, the first thing I've got is uh, your plans for the future. Well, yeah, plans for the future. It's, um, it's sort of short term and long term, really. I guess in the, in, in the short term, we've got... Um, Got some bigger carp that we uh, that we're going to introduce to the lake this winter. Um, so sort the of high doubles, which hopefully will go on to the twenties um, in a couple of seasons' time. Just a small, just a small head of carp we want to we want to keep in here. We want it to it's never going to be a, a carp water as such, you know. So we yeah. just want uh, so a few a few target fish really to keep the um, keep the carp boys happy. Um, that's the that's the immediate future. The sort of long term. I mean, you can only sort of plan so far ahead, really. But we, we definitely plan to increase the the, the tench numbers in the lake. Um, stock in tench. For, for those who don't know, is a is a very very expensive uh, and very um, drawn out affair. In that um, tench are quite a, a slow growing fish quite an expensive fish to stock so you can't necessarily um, unless you've got pockets full of money just uh, fill a leg of tent so in the um, in the sort of not short term but sort of middle term we, we, we plan to stock the the arm of the lake with uh, some tent and fruiting to sort of grow them on but have them in a in a, in a spot where they'll be relatively predator safe um, and will enable people to uh, have a little bit of a dabble for them whilst they're, whilst they're back 
taken on some weight before we then move them over into this lake. So there is a plan to increase the tench, but it certainly isn't a quick one, and it's one that um, can take a bit of time and a bit of money to do so. Um, but yeah, the bigger carp will be appearing in the winter, so this time next year. To watch this space. <laughs> yeah, this time next year, hopefully a few of them will grace the bank with a, with a pretty good weight. So, uh, what things have you done since you've taken on yeah, the lagoon? So we've we've had the water now since 2017. Um, started it as a bit of a shoestring. Um, Club assets was uh, was a, a spade when we started. <laughs> <laughs> Me making a spade. Um, we didn't have a great deal of capital inve to invest, you know. So we. Um, First season was a case of just get people get people fishing it, see what was in here. Um, luckily, the tent was still in here, and um, more fortunately, I guess um, there's still some very big pike in here. So that meant that we could get some members. Once you've got members, you can get a bit of money. Once you've got money, you can do a little bit of work. So there's the obvious stuff. A lot of the pegs have been rebuilt. Um, a few double pegs, a few smaller ones try to accommodate the guys who want to fish overnight, those who want to fish for the day. Um, we've moved fish in here, so we're fortunate in that we're, we're able to move silver fish over from the boating lake a couple of times a year, uh, permit permitting of course. Um, so we've obviously increased the stocks, and a select few fish have gone in, carp. Um, more recently we put in uh, just under 30 um, ghost carp, ghost poise that uh, have gone in. Um, but I guess the, the main work is uh, with the help of a bit of funding from the Environment Agency um, is the improvement to the water level via the new supply pipe that we've had put in. Uh, so we've had a brand new feeder pipe connected from the boat and lake over to the lagoon which will now ensure that that we don't suffer the low water levels that we've had uh, in the summer before. It's uh, normally at this time of year, although it's hard to believe with the amount of water that's fallen out of the sky at the minute. <laughs> yeah. Generally speaking, at this time of year, we normally start to lose a bit of water. Um, it really does put the fishing down. It, it, it makes it very hard. It makes it so that the, the birds can reach most of your bait. Uh, makes it very, very difficult. But as you can see, uh, the water level is, is at a nice, healthy level at the moment. Helped by the rain as well as the as well as the water coming through the pipe, but we'll be able to maintain decent water levels now, which will mean that we can we can increase fish stocks without worrying about problems with, with the water level and things like that. So that's good. We've restored the floating islands out in the lake as well, which um, is, a, is more sort of cosmetic, I guess, really, but it is um, it will be a fish holding spot eventually. Uh, and we've also treated the silts with uh, with siltax with uh, siltax, sorry. We've been out in the boat. Um, sounds straightforward enough. Go out in the boat and pour a load of, uh, of chalk over the side, but uh, it was, it's involved a lot, a lot of hard work. Uh, and I guess that leads me nicely to the, the volunteers and the, and the committee and, and all of the guys who really do muck in as a club to, um, to help us get to where we've, to where we've gone. It hasn't been a a one or a two man show this has been it's been a team of people who've put a lot of hard work yeah. into, into, into uh, getting this place pointed in the right direction you know, it's, it's uh, looking good mate i'm telling you what yeah. you've been doing over the last couple of years since i've been fished it and following you you've done a lot well, of hard well, work um, i'm glad that i'm glad that you that you notice it's uh, you know running a fishery there's as much happens behind the scenes as it does in the foreground, you know, so a lot of the time, especially in the first couple of years when we were negotiating with the, the, with the park, we were talking with the environment agency, yeah. you know, we were trying to get wheels wheels turning and we couldn't see any action in the foreground, so the assumption in some cases was it wasn't, that nothing was going on, but nothing could be further from yeah. the truth, you know, and now you're starting to see the results of all that in the, you know, in the real world because of the time that's been put in. In the background, getting everything, you know, getting everything it's ready. looking good now, mate. Honestly, especially when the sun's shining, this lake looks lovely. Yeah, I know. Pick the, pick the day for it. <laughs> yeah, we have did. picked the day for it. So, uh, what sort of kind of stock levels do you think still in here, like 
tench carp and the pike because I know this is very good for pike fishing in the winter season. Yeah, I mean there's there's still a, a, a large amount of unknown really, uh, and that's and that's the way we'd, we'd like to keep it. Depending on who you ask. Um, <laughs> There's, Always the uh, way. There's a few. There's a few shadows that um, that, that people uh, you know people notice and, and look at, and, 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 and apparently that's some of the original stock. You know, a couple of the, the big common carp are, are supposedly still in here and there. You know, they're, they're a pretty good size. Yeah. Um, they certainly don't make very many trips to the bank that I'm aware of, but there's a few guys who target those. You know. Um, Say carp stock levels will, will always be relatively low. You know, yeah. They're never going to be. They're never going to be high waters. It isn't that sort of water. We can't. We can't and don't want to. Uh, you know, accommodate a bank full of people with three rods each. You know, they, they go for the carp. We want there to just be a, a few nice fish in there. That's that's, the, that's always been the idea. Um, so you know, you probably by the time we finish with the carp, you'll probably be looking at between sort of. 35 and 40 fish maybe, all of which are individual fish. Yeah. And all of which are quite, you know, I've seen some of the, the, the footage you've put up recently on uh, your, your club's WhatsApp group of some of the fish you've stocked recently and those some of those ghosties you've put in and yeah, yeah, the, the ornamental the, ones, they look really pretty. They are and, and, and the fish that we put in before, you know, there's a couple of commons, a couple of mirrors that are very distinguishable, very noticeable fish um, and again the ones that we'll put in at the end of the year, they might not be anything they might have anything special about them to, you know, to distinguish them as individual yeah. fish but they'll be the only ones of that size you know so that will make them quite special anyway so yeah we don't want we don't want loads of those um tench numbers i mean there's still there's still a good head of old tench in here you know they're, these are old warriors yeah they're, 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 you see them come out they're, they're all of a pretty good size um you know you said you caught one that's about four four yeah. pounds that's about that's about the entry level for them on here. To be honest with you, 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 you do well to catch one that that small. I've yeah. seen a few that come out and they're like six pound, yeah, seven they're, pound. They're, they're generally five, six this time of year, seven pound. Um, they go up to about eight and a half, but that's a pretty special, yeah, pretty special fish. They on days like today, they can be a challenge. They can be a challenge, and in other days, it's like they're on a conveyor belt, you know, from one after <laughs> another. Um, some of our members do very well. And, and seem to seem to have the knack of getting one after another. Uh, there's a relatively good head of those in here, and, and as I said earlier, you know, it's something that we, we, we look at, we're looking to, to, to boost. Yeah, to boost. And, yeah, the silvers, plenty of silvers, but again, they can all um, vanish. Yeah. Into, into into the unknown. As we we're experiencing as today. We're experiencing today. Um, don't know where they are at the moment. Uh, and the, the pike, you know, it, it's always been a good pike board. Yeah. Um, I guess pike waters thrive on neglect really and had plenty of that prior to our, to our day to day. You can you can easily, you know, if you have a good day on here you can you can get you can get five, ten pike, you know, if they if they're going for it, ranging from sort of four or five pounds all the way up to very big. Yeah, the big girl. Say. Yeah, yeah, the big girl. Who um regularly features, you know, she she'll come out in the Sort of mid mid twenties up to up to the magical thirty number, um, and a few a few bigger doubles coming up behind her. You know, so the the pike sport on here for the size of the venue um, it takes some it takes some beating. Yeah, you know, really, really and there was uh, also meant to be some of the members coming down today to uh, help thin out the smaller population of the uh, the pike. But unfortunately, due to yeah. the weather, yeah, nobody's nature, here, uh, yeah, <laughs> other than us uh, crazy people. Yeah, yeah Mother Nature's put pay for that flag. But hopefully, the, the uh, weather's better tomorrow and some of the members will venture out. And yeah, I mean, so we, we plan to have, well, we, we, we keep the traditional pike fishing season on there normally. Um, so we normally just fish from October to, to March for the pike. But we, this weekend, decided to have a, a one-off um, just, to, just to allow the members to help us catch some of the smaller pike and um, move them into the, into the boating lake yeah. um, just to thin, thin them out a little bit um, make it so that the the guys who, who do take the sport seriously on here in, in the winter have got a better chance of getting through to the bigger fish um, but also to stop the smaller pike being a bit of a menace in the summer because once you do get into the silvers in the summer the pike can uh, play up a little bit and uh, 
are you? What about well, perch? What kind of perch do you have in here? Because I know you've got some in here. There are there are some perch in here. It's not a particularly prolific perch water, but uh, a few that have come over in the nettings that we've done from the boating lake have, have, been, have been a pretty good size. Yeah, we've had um, this. There's, there's two pounders. There's probably there's probably a three pound plus. You say it's not a it's not a sort of typical or classic tension. Um, sorry, perch water. Yeah. But there's there's have been some a few in there. that come over. Yeah. And on the days when you're struggling for the tension, normally the smaller the smaller perch will keep you keep you busy. <laughs> even they're giving us even they're, yeah, they're us avoiding us today as well. So yeah, this all sounds promising, mate. Yeah, there's. Uh, I mean, I can't emphasise enough the work that the you know the club committee, the club bailiffs especially, um, have done just in, in, in making sure that the place is looked after. You know, presence is, is key on, yeah. on all waters, um, and to take it from where it was to where we are today. You know, the, the hard work's been put in by lots of people. It's, uh, it's fantastic. You know, we Nick and I behind the scenes we. You know, we steer the ship, but the work's being done by by volunteers. You know, by the, the, the bailiffs, the, the committees, the committee members, and even just the the, you know, the, the normal members. You know, who, who come along and uh, help out on work parties. Really, really good to see, especially that some of the younger some of the younger members who you yeah, clearly Will. see. Yeah, Will's yeah. very involved. I've noticed. Yeah, Will, Michael. I mean, there's 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 all sorts too many to to mention by name, but you can see that. You can see the sport's in good hands for the future. You, know, you can see that, that at some point when we do pass the, the batons out, um, they've got the right idea, they've got the right ethics, they've got the right everything. Yeah. Um, to, to, um, to just to make sure the sport's in good hands going forward. So it's, it's really, really good to see. And when we first, you know, when we first set off to two mates trying to get themselves a lake and they finally got one, we, we said if we can just get a handful of decent people involved with this, we'll, we'll be okay. And, we haven't got a handful of decent people, we've got lots of decent people yeah. involved. So that's, that's just been amazing. So Do you have a, a limit on your members? Is there a waiting list? Well, we have just started a waiting this year. I mean, membership this year has maxed out pretty quick. Um, it's, it's, it's not a huge water, you know, we have, you know, we can accommodate probably 10, 12 people on here any, any given time, you know, so obviously there is a limit yeah. to the amount that we can have. Um, so once you get to the sort of the, the sort of high 40s, sort of 50 mark for members, um, which sounds sounds a lot, but you know, it, uh, it we've um, we've worked up to that number. Yeah. Making, you know, we started with you know, 15, 20, 30. And we, we moved up, and we we know we can accommodate around about 50 people without it ever getting crowded down there. You know, the busiest that it ever gets is sort of five or six yeah. people. Yeah. At any one time, so membership numbers this year have sold faster than, than they ever have. You know, so we are at a point now where we're, we're moving people onto, onto the waiting list. Yeah, which normally, you know, April, May, June, July, we normally get to a point there where we where, yeah. we, where we cap it. Um, but this year, if May, people are uh, um, May, and, and if, so obviously people can see the yeah. effort that's being made. If know, people and, are uh, interested and want to be on said waiting list, how much is a, a season ticket and things like that? Yeah, so a season ticket, uh, a whole uh, whole year annual ticket from the start of April all the way through to the end of the following following March, uh, sixty pounds for the year, um, which is phenomenal value to be honest. Well, yeah, I mean it, it's we, we are at a club, you know, but we it's. Uh, there's a, there's, a, there's a mountain of exclusivity about it. You're not gonna, ever going to be fighting for a swim. You yeah. know, you, you're always um, you're always going to be able to get on. You're always going to be fishing with like-minded, decent folk. And uh, yeah, I, I guess in, in that respect, it's, it's, it's more akin to being a sort of syndicate, really. Yeah. Um, so yeah, sixty pounds um, for the year. Uh, we do a winter ticket for forty pounds, which is from the October through to through to March. Um, all the details. Uh, Janglingclub.co.uk. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah. Right then, let's hope we can get some fish. Yeah. Yes. It's about half ten ish, quarter to eleven maybe. Oh. Still not had anything yet. So oh. I've changed over to a feeder rod, stuck a maggot feeder on, cast over towards the floating islands they got. Hopefully that produces something. Might take a few casts. But we're feeling optimistic, aren't we, Ollie? <laughs>
<laughs> We're optimistic. <laughs> optimistic. Maybe. Hopefully we can get something. Any so, second now. Yeah, any second now. That's what Ollie's been saying all morning. Any second now. Hopefully. Fingers crossed. Well, hello everyone. That's it. We're all done now. At home. Trying to warm up before I empty the car. Ended up being a big fat blank, unfortunately. Not through lack of trying. Me and Ollie tried at everything that we had at our arsenal. Um, yeah, Donny Lee had no interest on his carp gear. They were also doing today trying to thin out the pike population in the lake because they got a lot of quite a lot of small pike as well. Um, only a couple of lads turned up, obviously, because the weather was pants. Um, but a couple were caught and put into the main lake of Wicksteed Park. So yeah, it was a good day. I enjoyed myself sitting there and catching up with Ollie and putting the world to rights. Um, Ollie's going to send me some pictures of fish that have been caught recently, some of the tench and the carp that they've put in. So I'll uh, I'll add that onto the end of this. If you haven't subscribed, please hit the subscribe button and don't forget to push the bell notification so you get a notification of every time I upload.